Right, here we go. One second in. So we are live. So this is Lewis Michael here, uh, hailing from uh, London, UK. And uh, with me co-hosting the show again, after quite a few months of uh, of absence, I got uh, Jacob Sebasta. And uh, below, I got the folks behind the Skits Comics. Uh, you know... <laughs> They're, uh, they got a great campaign now at the moment. I wanted to bring them here because um, I'm enjoying what I'm seeing on the campaign page. I mean, these folks have a, you guys have a YouTube channel, and you know wh why don't you introduce yourselves? I'm gonna I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you the complimentary full screen, <laughs> and you can just tell us what you've been doing at uh, in your YouTube channel. What's uh, what's the game plan with the book? What's it all sure. about? Sure. So. I'm Michael, and I'm the uh, creator and illustrator and writer for Skits. And I'm Karshina. Hello. Oh, you can see my rebels. I'm a rebel. Yeah. Uh, I am editor and co-writer for Skits as well. Um, PR, marketing, wife, everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And we are out here in the U.S., uh, yep. beautiful U.S. We're in the South and enjoying the this, this summer heat. But no complaints, and it's all good. So, what's up, UK? Hey. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Um, you guys do some reviews on on uh, on your um, YouTube channel, isn't it? Comics reviews. Am I am I getting that right? Because I've watched a few of your videos, but I haven't watched the whole thing. So, well, what do you usually well, we do? do that? We do a bunch of different stuff. You know, she does all the reviews. She does the come get some. Come get some. And then uh, mm -hmm. I do a lot of illustration and, and stuff like that having to do with the art and the book itself. So, you know, there's a few different things on there for whatever might tickle your fancy. Yeah, so I do most of the uh, comic book reviews uh, when we were able to get to our LCSs. And, I mean, we mm -hmm. are now still, uh, but anything that we got, you know, through any, you know, the platforms like Kickstarter, Indiegogo, um, you know, friends who are just passing books to us. You know, we're doing those, those comic reviews. Michael does a lot of his rev um, drawings. Like he's going over pages. He has a skits fun house where he talks to a lot of the creators, like the yeah. process. Yeah, we know, got another one. Got yeah. another one on Monday coming mm -hmm. up with another creator. So that should be fun too. Yeah. So, so we just do a whole variety of stuff. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And. Um, Okay, now about your book, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna share it on my side. I mean, you you guys probably have it there, but it's probably easier I share it because um, you're you're outside. So uh, let me just uh, <laughs> <laughs> let me just uh, share screen. There we go, share screen, and I'm gonna I got your campaign page already open. Nice, perfect. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at there! Yeah, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually maximized a few a few pictures. But there we, there we go. This is what I wanted. Yeah, I mean, yeah. First thing I actually, um, this is your first campaign. Um, what is the book about? Before so, anything else. Sure. So skits is a book about a guy who can't tell the difference between his dreams and reality, and that's just the quick elevator pitch right there. That's everything that you'd ever want to know. Now, where that came about, skits actually came about 20 years ago when I was working at a TV station, and I started having these strange dreams where you know every day there was uh, a new dream and it was sequential and the reason why is i, I was working the midnight to 8 a.m shift so i was having really bad uh, uh sleeping patterns so I, what i did is i documented them wrote them all down and now it's become a book that you can actually buy right here on indiegogo i mean it's it's fun it's exciting this is only book one of six so we got five more coming after this one mm -hmm. and they're already written out so everything's mm -hmm. already written and scripted, ready to go. Uh, Michael is just doing the art, and we we just can't wait for you guys to actually have it in your hands. Yeah, so we're excited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you 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 both co-wrote the book. You're you're a team on way. Or, well, these are Michael's well, dreams, so it's all his book. <laughs> it's all I, me. I'm just you know the editor. She's more oh, editing okay. because here's what you do. Like you're you're an artist. You're drawing. You're writing. You're doing all these things. You need someone there to actually go over it and say, Hey, I know what you're trying to say. But maybe you should try saying it a little differently here. You know, exactly. it's like this is really what you should be doing. You know, you need an outside uh, eye, or, yeah, yeah, pair of eyes on this thing to actually help you out, and that's exactly what she does. So basically, <laughs> that basically tells you right there, just like what the wife does, she does it all, right? And she also yeah. also makes sure that everything is correct. 
Yeah, like a like a proper editor should do. I wish I had one, a proper one. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, <laughs> well, very unlucky. Really good. I remember yeah. the first editor I ever hired uh, to, re to revise a uh, single issue years ago, and I went to this um, big name script doctor from mm -hmm. uh, the, the Pacific Coast, and uh, obviously it cost me an eye and a leg. I thought, I thought for a moment I was playing for a lawyer, you know, and um, <laughs> the guy had some good ideas in terms of grammatic structure, but in terms of the actual the actual book, it, it didn't supply anything, you know, it's just disasters. So mm -hmm. since then I'm just piggybacking on um, on friends, you know, to get my, my books edited. Uh, about the art, man. So the art is all yours, yeah? I mean, it's apart from the yeah. cover, yeah? All right. Well, that, I wanted the covers as mine, and then we also hired some really high-end artists. I mean, Kent Williams, he's a legend, legend. in the field, yeah. uh, someone that I've looked up to for years. And so we hired him to do one cover, and then we got Patrick Reynolds, who we, me and Patrick Reynolds actually went to the same college, and he's an amazing artist. Mm -hmm. So I got him to do another cover. But everything else is all me. Yeah, and that's the crux of our campaign. What makes us so different and unique is because we have the three books, which gives you the three variant covers, one by Michael, Kent, and Patrick, but they have three yes. variant storylines. Um, yes. So it's not just like, oh, hey, yeah. it's the same book. You no. just got like a different artist. It's like, no, Kent Williams' book, you know, if you go by land, by sea, by air, just as an example, Michael by air, by sea, by land, you know, it's just like you're all getting to that same well, place here, here's the deal like there's a lot of people out there that that sell multiple covers you know like mm -hmm, variant mm -hmm. covers and stuff like that i've never been a person to buy those i could care less but i was like well what can i make it be so that someone like me would actually buy it and i said well why don't i do variant interiors let's do uh, variations on the stories and give people something to actually be excited mm -hmm. about yeah. so that's exactly why i did it and it works well with the story that i'm telling anyway because mm -hmm. it it it, it just works with the character and when people read it they'll realize that and again it's about dreams and reality what's real what's not so yep. dun, dun, dun. Yep. who knows who knows uh you know and and that was exactly what what got me interested in this book is that you're, you're basically telling the same story in three different books from three different points of view right so we just wanted to explore this a little bit more i don't know how much you can give away but when you when you do the individual books how are you actually approaching the story? So is this uh, one is told by one character and then the other one, who, who who's actually telling that story from which point of view he, does he come from? Well, here, here, here's the thing. like I can't tell you like which character's telling the story because it's really not in that sort of vein. And I wouldn't want to give it mm. away anyway because there's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff going on. But basically what it is, is I've taken extra pages and... Of basically 12 extra pages and 45 uh, different panels of artwork and spread right. them across the three books to kind of show different parts of the same story. Instead uh -huh. of saying, oh, it's this person's perspective, this person's perspective, it's like, well, there's stuff going on this way, this way, and this way. And I just wanted to break it up amongst the different books and say, okay, why is it happening in this book? We don't know. Maybe in the next book you'll actually find out where it's like, oh, okay, I see where this one's going, that one's going. Why were these few bits here and there were different? Okay, now I'm now I'm getting it. And this is actually the best way to tell that story, to break it up into this these books. Mm -hmm. Also, this is the only time you'll ever be able to get those variant uh, stories because, you know, once you can't really collect it in a, in, mm -hmm. in a big book all in one because there's different mm -hmm. panels. How am I going to do like three different uh, panels in one spot on a page? You can't. This is the only way you can do it. Yeah, and each book reads as a standalone. So if you're not able to afford the three book journey, which is beautifully done, uh, as you can see here, yep, exactly right there, we have that skits band. Yeah. Which the art I love industry that. calls it a belly band. It's yeah, signed, signed and, and numbered. numbered. I mean, it's great. Um, so that way you're able to get all three. So that way you can actually say, wow, my page 12 was different from your page 15 and, you know, whatever, but you all got the same story. But even if you just got the one book, you still can understand what's going on. So we're not going to leave yeah. you high Every, every and dry. book reads fine as yeah. a standalone. You, you'd be just fine. And but, there's 60 plus pages. And for yeah. each, yeah, it's each not one. just like 60 pages broken up into three. No, it's no, 60 no. plus 60 each. plus pages. Each for page each. Page. Right. Okay. This is why I'm seeing a spine here on each one of these books. That's yep. all. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, I, I love this package. I love the little sleeve. And you guys sign on the sleeve, not, the, not on the actual books, right? And, exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, if yeah. that's the case, I'm 100% behind you. I, 
I, I know most people like to have their books signed. I myself prefer not to sign books, and although I have nothing against an artist signing his books, I much prefer to have the book immaculate without any signature. You know, I exactly. think, uh, signature should be like something that comes in a little card on the side and you kind of just slip it inside, like you, you yeah. don't want the thing, you know, like, okay, yep. there you go, a little, you know, like or, a little complimentary thing, you know. Exactly. Or if an artist says, hey, I like my covers to be um, flawless, you know, like mm -hmm. you, it's just like, yeah, if you had opened it up, maybe a page inside, cool. Mm -hmm. I think that's great as well, as long as it's on the inside or like you said, like have something attached to it, like a little card you can put inside. That's great because that way, to me, it doesn't devalue the book on the outside. Um, yeah. And then, I don't know, it just there's, looks tacky to me. It's just know. different. <laughs> Diff different people like different things and we figured this is probably the best way to do it so everyone's happy exactly mm -hmm. before we go into the art guy i just want to revise some of your panels or some of your pages i'm just gonna again sure. just just show off people the the campaign here and your perks so it's so fun to see this in uh the uh some, the somewhere crossover else. instead of us <laughs> instead of the pals it's like awesome yes. to see yeah, it's in oh. pounds, so it's it feels like I'm, we've made a lot less money than we actually have. I know. <laughs> uh, uh, well, well, I mean, the, the actual top value is in dollars, and then he shows below the conversion. Yeah, the conversion is uh, yeah. well, I was talking a little about bit the less. Campaign, the main campaign, the overall funds that have been curled. Yeah. I was like, 9,000? Oh, that's pounds. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, well, don't forget, uh, Indiegogo will uh, eat a slice, so uh, it's probably it's close. <laughs> Never forget yeah, that. Right. <laughs> Don't throw any any uh, party rockets yet. <laughs> Those guys are <laughs> bastards. So here you got the featured perks. These all the three books with the sleeve, and and then like you're saying, you can choose just to have one or or two or or the third version. And like you said, you're not actually losing anything from the story, right? You're just not getting the full trip, the full. Yeah, the exactly. Full it's story. like if you buy an extra book, you get extra. That's the way it mm -hmm, should be. Mm -hmm. You know, it's awesome. So. And again, yeah. for a price point, if you say, hey, I really like Michael's cover and then only Kent Williams cover, you're yeah. still getting a great value because you can purchase them on the back end, uh, uh -huh. which is the add-on feature. Uh -huh. So that way, if you're like, I can only have 50 bucks, then great. You got 50 bucks or however. Uh, yeah. Right. And also, you can do those add-ons in the background. A few people have done this where they do the add-ons and they buy all three books for 75 instead of 85 because they didn't want the signed belly band. So all right. you can do that as well. Yeah. And the add-on is when you go to a single one, and then you just have the possibility on yeah. uh, after on the this you have the possibility. Right, right, right. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So it saves them a little bit of money uh, that way, unless yeah. they were on our mailing list. We had a pre-launch, and that is so important mm. for any creator out there doing this on this kind of platform to get yes. a pre-launch page, uh, because we sent out that email and it already gives them a, a discount. And the belly band is actually hand drawn um, of Michael's choice. So yep. you actually are getting a piece of art um, as a, a person who was like, oh, wow, I can't believe I signed up for this, this campaign. And look at the perk that I'm already getting out of the gate, you know, by mm. getting the three book journey. I'm getting something hand drawn versus and, something that's and a discount and a discount mm -hmm. as well. So. Mm -hmm. Ah, well, tell us more about so you you can actually add a discount to the to the pre-launch uh, as a pre-launch offer. So that it goes as a code or something. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it takes you to a secret page where you can only see the uh, actual, uh, you know, that value. Yeah. There for it's you. It's a secret link. So talk to us afterwards if you want it. <laughs> oh, yeah, Jacob, can you believe this is a secret link? <laughs> Have so actually what you what you're seeing on the front end is not what we're seeing on the back end because we've got others that have you know purchased through the secret link so through the campaign page so it's mm -hmm. always important to sign up i know people are like oh i've already signed up for like 30 million books it's like yeah we understand that but for us personally we didn't like spam we didn't do anything it's literally we just like dropped it here's what we're doing you know thanks so much and then boom here's your secret link so people like that so they're like oh great i just wanted just to get the book you know at a discount yeah, price yeah. done and done so yep. and and again before i go to the art I, i'm just curious about this other perk here the straight jacket <laughs> come on you you guys are including a a full size straight jacket is that yes, yes. It's small a, medium large extra large yeah oh it's, my a, God. it's a real one it's not any of that junk that you get at the costume store. It's a real, honest to goodness straight jacket. So. Yeah, oh we my got God. people. We know people. Oh, <laughs> we you know, know people. A secret back passage. It's a straight jacket. Who the hell did I invite them? 
<laughs> you got five of them on top of that. <laughs> and you're gonna exactly. Oh, worldwide. and the cool thing about the straight jacket tier is that um, it comes with a card that Michael is actually going to sign and uh, hand drawn on the card as well. So. Yeah, and it's si signed and numbered, so there's only going to be five of them. So you, Lewis, can be walking in the UK with a straight jacket as yeah. a number, a schizo original. Yeah, it's a quick way to land myself in jail or in the loony asylum as he goes here. Uh, yep. He's getting uh, serious troubles here uh, around here with the freedom speech. Uh, right now, he's uh, very sensitive to walk around in the, in, in the wrong garments. Believe me, oh, I would no. like to. At home, we'll at home, that, I will use it. <laughs> well, just say that you're just hugging yourself. That's all. You're yeah. just hugging yeah. yourself. <laughs> I'm saying I'm, I'm promoting a, a book. <laughs> That'd be probably easier. Yeah. You're promoting your own safe space. There you go. There yeah, you go. definitely. Oh, and you include, okay, the page of sequential art as well. Yeah, that's uh, it's a really, it's a nice, it's a very nice, complete book, I got to say. Lovely. Yeah. Nice. Now, talking about the art then. Um you know, because I really like this campaign page. I mean, it is it is this, the the suitable structure for a very unusual book. You know, so I I, I think you guys uh, crack this really well. But oh, thank okay, you. yeah, no problem. Now, all the art I'm going to be showing is this all yours, or some of it is uh, from inv invited uh, oh. artists for just for the campaign. Well, like I said, there's only two other pieces. There's only two pieces that aren't mine, and if you show them, I'll tell you that who who did it. But what you're showing right, right. there is That's all good, me. All yours. This is lovely, man. Now, first, before we, I think you you do this um, you do this traditionally, and then you go on digital for colors, or is this all hand painted? How what well, those, what do you do here? Those right there are actually digitally painted. I draw them. I color them, I add some effects, and right there is what you get out of it. So they're just uh, digital paintings in Photoshop, these two these pieces. These are the concept right arts, yeah. yeah, the concept yeah. arts. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, I mean, actually I... three, there's actually three different art styles in the book. I'm doing one where it's just pencils and color, then I'm doing one where it's inks and color, and then I'm doing like concept art style, which is what you're seeing right here. So yeah. there's three different styles of art in the book, a la Dave McKean, Kent Williams from the 90s, you know, some of that mm -hmm. type of stuff, mm -hmm. Sandman covers that Dave McKean used to do. Yeah, and I like that. I mean, I like the the whole, you know, I mean, of course, and it's fitting for the story you're, you're trying to tell, you know, this uh, surreal kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Yep. And I, I, I gives me a feeling straight away, even without reading it, that we're going to be experience a lot of um, slightly um, nonlinear kind of narrative, you know, and I and I, I dig that, man. I dig that a lot. And and when you, you mix media, or even if you're not mixing media, but you're mixing styles of uh, within the same media, like like you said, just pencils and then some, some pencils and inks and then, and then just some colors over pencils you're mixing it all up sometimes in the mm -hmm. same page or for a few pages i love that man i love uh, that's breaking the mold as uh as going as thinking out of the box you know no one is I doing do. it and and that's what skits is right skits is short for schizophrenia is short for short skits that you can do you know like on theater stage or movie you know it's just it's all kinds yeah. of crazy yeah um, we just want to make sure that the reader gets the full advantage of what skits is so. now now these pages right here that you're looking at the way that i did these to make it look like traditional art is well for one i did all the pencils on paper so it's just pencils on paper yeah and then i actually i i do a um, abstract art, you know, non-representational abstract art. And what I do mm -hmm. is I'll scan that stuff in and use that as the base for my colors. And that's why you get these nice, vibrant, rich colors and backgrounds that look like traditional art because technically mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. is traditional art. I just adjust colors and stuff like that once we get yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. So. I mean, I, I was, I was, I, obviously I, I can see the digital here and there, but these could also be collages and all that. I mean, like here, yep. Yep. here I, I, I could tell that, let me just zoom out again. Here I could tell, you know, I could spot the digital here, but, you know, again, yep. I wasn't certain if the base, you know, it, it could have been pencils. It could just been pencil on paper, you know, like you just mentioned. That's what you've used yep. for these ones. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm liking the mixture, man. I'm liking the, the colors here are really strong where they need Thank to be, you, you know? Very, yeah. Uh, you guys got a print sample already of this because sometimes some printers they kind of they they they're they're quite they're quite good at screwing up the work that a guy has done sometimes, <laughs> you know. Well, well, thankfully, you know, we know enough people, you know, who are online doing indie books where we know exactly which printers to go to to get exactly what we want. 
So mm -hmm. that ain't going to be a problem. And of course, I'm a professional in the industry, so I know how to build my files so they won't have any problems once That's they right. go to the printer. Mm -hmm. And just in case, though, because, you know, there's always that element. Uh, we've also, you know, received those little samples or those things in the mail where you can yeah, say, oh, yeah, here's yeah. your sample of what it will look like. Yeah, we'll get is, that stuff ahead of time. Yeah. But I mean, we're nowhere near that point. You know, yeah. we're just here in the crowdfunding stage, you know. So. Yeah. Yeah, oh, you don't have samples yet, the paper sign. Okay, well, I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, most people go for silk uh, gloss paper and all that just to pump up the colors. But I, I think you, you guys, you, your book probably deserves a slightly better stock, you know, which uh, which wouldn't be as smooth, but um, you'd have a bit of um, well, that, well, a good touch to it. That's a, that's a good yeah. segue, yeah, good our segue. First, our first two stretch goals was actually – better paper for the inside and then better cardstock for the covers. You know, those were the things mm. that we wanted to really bring to it first and foremost. It's like, we want to make the product better first, not just, Hey, here's this, here's that. You yeah. know, it's like, no, let's make the product actually better at, at the printers first before we start giving away freebies. Yeah, that was a great uh, segue. Perfect, Louis, because um, if you go back on the main page on the updates. Yeah. Um, uh, there, yeah. That, I gotta go there. That's yeah. where we have those stretch goals, which tells people, hey, and so, so we're already there. We've got those stretch goals. Um, there we go. Yep, there they are. Crazy stretch goals. They're unlocked. Yeah. So, yeah, that's where you get the higher quality interior mm -hmm. paper for the comic. Each of those covers having the better car stock. And right now, where we're at, if you go down a little bit more, uh, we have our um, skits adjustable paper puppet bookmark. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> this is not your normal bookmark. It's not like a little square or boring. That's actually um, cut and uh designed just for skits where he actually can hold the book you know you can adjust them you know it's oh, like a, oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 so oh, it's I always see. something cool yeah that's yeah. nice custom made oh man you guys have all the best ideas so <laughs> everyone is getting one at, i mean already at that 12k so everyone has already got the first three and then the next mm -hmm. stretch goals mm -hmm. uh as you can see uh, for the physical ones um we'll have um a mask a skits mask uh we also have a thaumatrope uh, harkens yeah, back to like, go the down. original film. Mm -hmm. uh, yep, there it is. There's that thaumatrope, and then we'll have it for skits as well. So yeah, we're oh. actually gonna do. Yeah, that's just an example of what a thaumatrope is. But I'll be doing one of skits. You know, a, mm -hmm. a special one of skits. Yeah, but. yeah. I want stuff that obviously, obviously, you know, related to to the to the subject. Yeah, I love it, man. I mean, yeah. yeah. Hey, Jacob, you know, I was thinking about this, you know, a lot of guys going to these campaigns and obviously they, 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 they're planning on doing quite well and most people do quite well. And then you got these very long stretch goals, like, you know, the next 20 grand, we'll, we'll add a bookmark <laughs> and then another 40 grand and we'll add a sticker. And I'm like thinking, you know what, you know, it's a bit, I don't know. I mean, it's probably better to keep the stretch, the stretch goals. Uh, at the low price points, you know, like uh, you know, yeah. I mean, my next company, I'm gonna do one uh, every, every two hundred bucks, <laughs> <laughs> like that. No, but I mean, I'm gonna do something like you know, maybe every every five hundred bucks uh, or a thousand. I'll throw in uh, a new um, what's the thing for a collectible a collectible card, you know, um, yeah. card with the stats of the of the characters, you know, something like that. And I think it's it's, it's better to do it like you guys are doing here, eight thousand. 10 12 you know not really you know you get again i understand some guys are going to do really well really good campaigns they're going to get you know they're going to get good funds but um i prefer the stretch goals like this you know not not to pander too much to to the audience you know just <laughs> just, have, just have one every every two grand you know i mean because you know as long as they're affordable as long as they're not coming out of pocket and you're not losing out, I think is the best thing to do. I, I mean, the public. Exactly. And the thing about it is, is that uh, we are so excited and so thankful for the people that's gotten us this far. So anyone that comes into the campaign now, they're just going to help the next backers because right now they're getting all of this themselves, right? So if you were to purchase your book today, you're automatically getting that bookmark which mm -hmm. is awesome. And I think sometimes secretly people do that. They wait to say, okay, well, when, when are we going to get that bookmark? I'll, I'll get in on that bookmark. But what you're doing is you're just helping propel for the next one. So it's like, you got the bookmark. We've already got the upgrades to the books. Yep. Let's let's go for it. Let's just go for it. So mm -hmm. it's, it's great. It's great. One thing I'll say for sure is for a normal reader, it's kind of hard to uh, understand that the quality of paper is very important. Because yes. usually, usually people are kind of used to, oh, I, I don't know, 
what it is, but it feels like it's gonna rip just by turning the page sometimes. And yeah. uh, people don't know that there's a better alternative and they say, oh, what paper better, who cares, right? But it, it really does make a difference and it makes a book really nice collectible and it'll last longer. For sure. Absolutely. So I say that in my reviews all the time for my comment reviews. Like, you know, it's been that high gloss or if it's like your standard or if it's even newsprint, it makes a difference in the way that the colors jump out, the story, as well as just in your hand. It's like you're turning the page and you're like, am I turning two pages or four pages or one page? Mm -hmm. You know, it makes a difference. So yeah. not, not only do you want that beautiful page, but you also want that beautiful uh, tactile experience mm -hmm. you know when mm -hmm. you touch it you're like oh man I, I, I you know it makes you just feel good and sometimes it's subconscious but people who are actually around this all the time they notice it immediately so there you go it's like mm -hmm. being a water artisan tap water or avion no, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah simple agreeing of <laughs> I mean, going back to my going back to my original point it's also um uh, it's also a question of getting the right paper for the right book. I mean, like you were saying, a lot of stuff, um, uh, a lot of you know, some particular papers make the colors pop. But for example, if you if you want to go for um, a really kind of cheap kind of grindhouse kind of feel, you know, something <laughs> between the newspaper white, uh, newspaper paper white, and uh, a little bit more than that, I think is is the ideal thing. I, I never want to have um, um, I never want to have something that at a, a paper that is too thin and it's the kind of paper that you just uh, put it against the light and you can see the other page straight away straight through uh, <laughs> yeah. magazine paper <laughs> yeah paper socks should always be a little bit heavier than that but um you know for example if you if you if you if you go all the way out and you 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 make your book into um transform the edition of the book the print run into a maxi size kind of thing you know like a bigger mm -hmm. size instead of the traditional yeah. u.s comic size uh, and then in that case, then you just uh, you just you know bloody only invest on a, a really good paper, you know, like something that uh, you know actually you know has got some weight to it, you know, and it will will take the colors really yeah. well, you know, almost like a a watercolor paper, you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then of course you have the complete opposite, and that's going full full digital, uh, which uh, I I think might be worth asking do, do you guys think if you have a real big success you might come up with a digital version as well well we didn't really get to that point quite yet i mean for myself personally it's like when it comes to the digital editions even when i get free digital uh editions with my campaigns that i back i never even look at them you know and i know this is probably something for people overseas probably want to do something like that because the price point's a lot better because they don't have to pay oh, yeah. for the shipping the high shipping well, you're, you're <laughs> talking to the europeans you know so yeah. <laughs> well also I, I think a lot of times um, uh, when you give out digital editions they tend to get uh ripped off you know someone's always going to send one out and of course for us because we're just newcomers that might actually be a good thing to just send it out there to everybody <laughs> but i think that might be something that we'll look into on um on the next campaign maybe or if people ask for it enough we haven't had anyone actually ask for it to be perfectly honest for it but, yeah, yeah. a lot of people that that are even international backers they're like yeah i'll pay the shipping costs uh, because I actually want to have something physical in my hand, albeit yes, physical or digital, you can like scroll through, look through, carry around with you, just like everything else. But there are some people who, you know, like myself, when I do reviews and stuff, traditionally, I want to hold something, you know, and have it, you know, whether it's a coffee yes. book table or not, or just just to show people, oh, look, I got a bag and board. Oh, you know, it's it's just something about having the physical copy. Um, I don't know. It's just it's just different. But digital is not out of the realm. A possibility well, for I maybe the next book yeah but, i tell yeah. you what if people want to pay for something you know we're willing to put it out there because we're here to make money you know yeah so it has yeah. to be advantageous because we don't want to have just four people saying oh look i want digital just for for sales even though there's sales it's just like okay well then do well but if it's yeah. like having the digital included with the book maybe uh you know and send out mm -hmm. maybe a less um 
a, a, a lower a, quality, a lower quality of it, yeah. just in case. But yeah, so people for can't physical, actually, so people can't actually print it out or anything like that. Yeah. You know, that's that's the big thing. Mm. Okay. I'm actually just uh, sharing uh, Jacob's work. He uh, works on his book called Vestry. It's like a fantasy. Oh yeah, sort of, nice. sort of nice. sort of cream. For the sorcery book is the artist and the creator. Oh, nice! Um, I think he, oh, he, he he passed the writing uh, credits to uh, to someone else, though. But, but he's still the creator, yeah. and, uh, and he still creates the story. So, um, and Jacob, you know, he obviously, as you can see, he works digitally, and uh, he's, he's been releasing the books digitally, but uh, he has a print version of them. And uh, yeah, I'm, I myself, I'm also um, I also prefer to. To, to to have a physical copy i mean i th i think that's the the ultimate uh, the ultimate goal isn't it when you're actually doing a comic book so you know yeah I mean, and oh, and yeah. Uh, and a lot of effort goes into what we just talked you know color stock i mean paper stock color color quality and that's that's part of the work that's not just actually write to do the book but then comes all the process of actually having it printed so um in like the end, ninety-five percent yeah. people prefer having it physically. You know, you know that's that's the whole thing about comic books. Yeah, it is well, way better physically. Yeah. Besides you know, having something, a preference, yeah. Something I, I ran into probably around like uh, two thousand one, two, three, somewhere around there when the iPod came out from Apple. Um, you know, people were talking about, oh, let's get MP3s, let's sell the. You know, that's the big thing, and I was like, why am I going to pay the same amount of money for a digital album that I would pay for the CD? I, I never understood that, and because I was like, I'm going to buy the CD, then I'm going to make my own MP3s from it or my own digital music from it, and I'll either put it to the side, or if I don't really like it, I can go sell it and get my money, uh, part of my money back. And I'm mm -hmm. like that with comic books, too. It's like, well, okay, I got a comic book. Maybe someday I don't want it. I can sell it back. But if it's digital, who am I going to sell that to? You know? That's a good oh, yeah. point. <laughs> I hadn't thought about it. I never, I never sell. I never resell anything. I keep everything. That's why I cannot move right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a pat rack in all of us, yes. Yeah. yeah, I'm stuck right here. I mean, I'm perpetually in this place. I only managed to get out of these pile of books just to go to work and come back but yeah that's uh that's that's exactly another another thing you know that means there's always the the collectability of things and uh and obviously that adds value that's inherent value to that while uh digital yeah i mean it's like and on top of that um i used to send uh digital every time i send digital files uh, of a whole book sometimes things happen you know i mean the, yeah. they, they crash you lose them a uh, hard drive goes and there, there goes the file and if if you if you don't save on a separate uh, hard drive, uh, you com your computer, your laptop is a problem, and there goes like all this investment of uh, digital yeah. books. Yep. Western digital, no. Yeah, I, well, <laughs> I, yeah, I've been I've been working in the industry for twenty plus years as a designer and illustrator and artist, and uh, everything I do is either in uh, save it in doubles or triplicates. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. You have to. I gotta save mine in quadruples, man. <laughs> and even then, I lose. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, 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 I lost my entire, uh, what's that thing called? The, the iTunes, the iTunes the music library. library. I lost yeah. the entire library yeah. because I don't know why. I thought that thing was backed up back at uh, Apple. It wasn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I only found out the day after <laughs> I lost it. <laughs> The, the laptop burn, I lost the whole thing. I had already like 300 songs or whatever. I had already spent like 200 bucks on that thing. And I'm like, the oh, heck? I'm so sorry. Well, I, it, it's, it's one of those things. I, I um, also have um, Verse Films Productions, which is our horror uh, production company. Hey, Verse Films out there. And working <laughs> with the film industry, that's one of the biggest things. It's like you have to make sure you get like terabytes upon terabytes because like sending those files to studios or, or back and forth from your yeah. cinematographer or you know you're dealing with what people can't handle right now like with the 4k and 6k when it was back in the day when it was all brand mm -hmm. new it's like well my computer can't handle that i need to have a computer that can handle that and i cannot yeah. lose it i just yeah. cannot lose it and so i've had that happen plenty of times so yeah yes. <laughs> I, learned, I learned years ago I, you never keep anything on your computer you know it, everything's on multiple hard drives you know i, I got you know raided mm -hmm. hard drives you know so everything's backed up and duplicate at least mm -hmm. and then also even with my itunes library you know apple likes to put all that stuff on your hard drive on the actual computer 
I don't uh-huh. keep any of that stuff. I always put it on external hard drives, and then if it needs to go to my music files or any of that stuff, it always goes yeah. to external hard drives, which are backed up in different places. Yeah. I, I got, I got like 25 years of MP3s, you know, on, on my computer, where it's like, uh, was like four or five hundred uh, gigabytes or something like that. I got, I, I don't know. It's a, it's a ton. That's almost. Probably, mm-hmm. probably about that and it's like I, I i don't know what i'd do if i lost all that i got tons <laughs> of stuff that i don't own the original music I'll, I'll, I'll sing for him it's fine i'll <laughs> <laughs> be a long singing session it's too yeah. many songs you know <laughs> yeah i mean I, I i i didn't know i trusted the hardware like i trusted the system you know <laughs> yeah, never trust and, uh, the system no, i got never screwed trust the system. of course never not now i learned this was, uh, I think, this was about eight years ago. I learned my lesson after that one. Never yeah. again. Yeah. yeah. I, I, but getting back to the digital and, and printing, <laughs> I will say to you guys uh, what I s- said to myself: do all the printing first, and then on your issue two, on your volume two, for the the, the peeps that didn't got the, the the first issues. Then, if you inclined to just throw in a digital version of issue one, uh, because also it gets to a point that, let's say, if you how, how many how many issues you guys have planned six, 12? It's six, it? six, six, six books, right. yeah. This is just the first book, yeah. And you, you're gonna have the three different versions of each one as you go. I don't know, Louis, we'll you're asking those questions, right? Right, 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 right. About. Yeah, I know this style is getting to trouble. Man. <laughs> <laughs> the questions I asked, uh, I'm like, Louis. we should try. I'm, I'm I'm like Richard Dreyfus in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, you know. <laughs> Gets get stick into that room. What the hell are you people? What's going on here? I'm that exactly. Guy. This means that, something. This means something, but it's a great movie. Thank you for that. Yeah. Reference. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, eventually, he only has two choices: either he gets arrested or he goes into the UFO. That's it. <laughs> he knows <laughs> right, too much right. by then, you know. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, if 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 you guys will do that, I mean, it just gets to a point that if you if you include back issues in a particular campaign. It just you have a huge envelope to send, and then by then I that will be my suggestion. Anyone anyone asking be yeah you know do, do digital for the the previous issues you know because by then hopefully enough people already got hold of your books or already enough people uh, have them in their hands the printed copy you know and they, they already have the collection. But then again you know I'm I'm yeah, I'm perfectly perfectly understand if any any creator says nah I'll never do digital man because like you said I think you're taking over my. PR job, Lewis. I don't know. Yeah, that, that I know. In the works, but but you know, you're gunning for a job. That's good. That's yeah, good. That's I mean, good. I, I always do it. <laughs> I, I I'm gonna ask someone. I'm kind of curious. What do you find as a PR person for a comic book? What, what what's the biggest challenge for you? What what's what's the crack of the job? Uh, well, I mean, the number one thing is getting people to buy the book. Um, however, if it's done correctly, and, and I say this with any industry, whether it be, and I'm only speaking because I'm in both the entertainment, being an actress and film and then comics and stuff, um, you really seriously have to hunker down and have a plan, uh, because you can't just spam everybody and be like, oh, hey, buy my book or buy, you look at my film. People are like, I don't know you. Who are you? Girl with the crazy hair. You know, (laughs) what's going on? That's exactly what I do. And I I might have done a mistake. (laughs) Right. Or, but I mean, I mean, there is an art. I mean, marketing 101 is you want your product out there and you want someone to receive it. Well, how do you go about it? Look at who you're marketing to, right? If you're marketing to people who are in love with comics, start there start to see, well, what type of comics are they in love with? Are they the superhero? That means dreamscapes are not something for them. Are they, you know, an eclectic mix? Maybe dreamscapes could be something for you. You know what I mean? Because everybody who loves Batman is not going to like, you know, uh, Spider-Man, you know, whatever. You know, you just have to find out what mm-hmm. makes... I, like both. I know, but I, it's, okay, <laughs> let me finish. Um, but you, you understand what I'm saying? It's like you have to find that market. And then you need to start on a social media now that we're in this generation of social media. Find out who your target audience is again. Find out and say, hey, this person wants me to share or retweet their stuff. It's a you scratch my back, I scratch yours sometimes. Then do that. Get to know them. Be on streams, you know. Always say yes to people that are like, hey, or let people know, hey, I'm busy this week, but can we come back on a next week? And people understand that as long as you don't blow them off, you know, without any reason or whatever, just be kind and be nice. 
once you're done with that, build up the height. We always say you sell the sizzle, right? Uh, I don't know if you're vegan or, or we love to eat meat. So, you know, you sell the sizzle. It's like if you're in mm -hmm. the kitchen and you're cooking that bacon, you know, but you're just waking up, you're like, hmm, what, what's she cooking in that kitchen, right? I sold you right there. You don't know what I was cooking, but you smell it and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. I'm hungry for it. So that's what you have to do with, with anything in the industry. You have to sell that sizzle. Um, that's why some of the best commercials you see, you got like a woman like, oh, look at this chocolate bar. Oh, and you're like, oh, is she is she doing this little, you know, like, oh, she's all about the chocolate. OK, if, if I can get a girl like that, OK, I'm buying that chocolate bar. Right. You're selling that product and it could be the worst chocolate ever. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't like your chocolate. It has macadamia nuts. Blah. You know, whatever. Um, but she sold it as if it was sensual. It was nice. It was something, you know, ooh, chocolate, you know. So there you go. So uh, my advice, like I said, is just take the time to target your audience, know who you're sending your material out, and just be prepared. On our campaign, everything you see on skits is everything you get. We show the three books. We show the belly band. We show the artwork. That's what you're going to get. You yeah, know, not, not this, not oh, sure. I don't know. You may get a sketch card. It's like. I'm well, actually I'm actually don't. surprised at how many campaigns are out there where they don't they don't show you what you're actually getting. Yeah, you know? it, it's mm. baffling. Um, I mean, you can sell tickets to um, a film festival, but at least you give a preview, right? It's called a trailer, so you'll mm -hmm. know exactly what you're going to be seeing, right? I mean, everyone in every industry does it. You have to sell them something so they can be interested in it. I mean, if you're a horror fan, you know, killer clowns from outer space. You know, you want to see, oh, I'm all about killer clowns, you know, versus, you know, something else. It's, it's just, I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, don't spam everybody. Uh, just be around people, get to know people, and then, you know, those doors don't, will open for you. Don't, don't spam everybody? Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Too light. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It is difficult, man. What you're talking about, you know, know your demographics, and then I met them, uh, and then you just mentioned, you know, some some campaigns don't actually show the book. I mean, some campaigns get a, get get by with just the cover and the blurb, and which brings me brings me to my next topic. We still have time. You said, how well is your YouTube channel doing in relation to to the campaign? Do you believe that that as a platform helps a lot, or it just creates a little bit a little bit of extra? of extra white, a little bit of extra customers, or is it really is an, an important tool? Because I see a lot of these guys doing quite well on YouTube, and and then obviously they launch a comic book campaign, and they do quite well there, but the comic book campaign by itself is, is not representative of anything, so they're not getting like a passing trade. They're really just getting the, their, their YouTube fans to go there and buy. Uh, obviously, you guys have a YouTube channel, so... Well, I, I, you know, I'd have to really do more looking into this. The I mean, analytics of it. yeah, I mean, us, we're just like trying to get it out there in front of as many people as possible. And the two major places that people seem to be promoting comics right now is Twitter and YouTube, you know, so those are mm -hmm. the ones that we focused on and we just tried to do our best. I mean, we, on our YouTube channel, we got 426, you know, um, subscribers, subscribers. And but we started we, this six months ago. So. Yeah, and we got 130 that's awesome. backers. We got 130 backers on our campaign, though. And, you know, and so that's roughly what about a fourth, a little more than a fourth, so 25 yeah. percent of yeah. of our back. You know, comparative to how many people we have on YouTube. Now, if you look at some of the bigger people, like Ethan Van Skyver, he's mm -hmm. got 8,000 backers, but his channel has like 130,000 subscribers. So. I mean, that's, the correlation there, I mean, that's only yeah. like 6%, you know, but that's I mean, right. it's not even 8%. 8% for him, though, is making him a millionaire. So that's, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know but uh, I'm just saying, it's like, who, who really knows? I'm, the more, the merrier, I, I would guess, right? And I think it's the way that if you can put yourself out there, people can say, oh, yeah, I caught your show. You're likable. I like you. You're funny. You're cool or whatever. And I like your art. I'm actually being immersed into what you guys are doing. It's not just, hey, I'm going to cause drama. Hey, I'm going to talk about drama just to get controversy. And it's just like, I, I'm here to sell a product, kids. Yeah. And the mm. product is the comic. And we want to share with you. And that's one of the, the differences between our 
personal uh, campaign as well as our YouTube channel, we're bringing the experience to our readers and to our audience. Like Michael is doing pages um, almost every week that says, hey, these are actual pages. So when you actually get the book in your hand, you can recall and say, oh, I remember when he did this shading. That's awesome. I can actually see it now. Or I remember when he did this inking, it looked cool in the process. And now I actually have it in my hand. And a lot of people, yes. they like that. So we're bringing yes. the audience with us. Same thing with my reviews. I'm sharing reviews of, and showing people, hey, we actually supported these campaigns. We've got over, you know, so many books that mm -hmm. we purchased mm -hmm. with our money. Yeah. It wasn't given to us or whatever. We purchased them and we're doing <laughs> reviews. So people say, wow, they're not, it's like that though, what is it? The hair club for men is like, I'm not only a client, I'm also the president, right? Yep. So it's like, um, so yeah, you just got to show people, Hey, you know, I'm actually, you know, doing these reviews for comics. Um, uh, but I'm also trying to sell my product as well. Also, also you got to look and see what's actually getting people numbers. I mean, if you yeah. really go into some of these channels, I mean, what seems to be giving people numbers is controversy. Yeah. You know, people yeah. jump up really, really fast, but here's the thing though. I see people's channels jump up really fast because they're doing like controversial and talking about people. Or they're paying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, who knows how they get, yeah, you know but they jump up really fast. And then eventually it starts to dwindle because people don't want to hear, you know, what you're, what you're talking about anymore. But, you know, I, I feel like maybe what we're doing, we're trying to do something that's maybe more sustainable yeah. where yeah. it's like, we're here to sell a product. Here's the product. We don't talk uh, bad about other people. You know, all we do is just talk about the product. We're, we're here for you. You know, that these are our values. And uh, it's not what other people do, but it's what we decided to do with ours. And we've yeah. seen our channel grow slower than other people who were at the same place as us like six months ago that started going into controversial stuff. So maybe that's bad for us, but we are our, our value structure. We're quality. Well, mm -hmm. our, value, our value structure <laughs> is such that we don't talk bad about other people. It's not it doesn't it, it's not good virtuous. You know, it, it's not good. Yeah to be that way you want to be virtuous not you know yeah and yeah. It's, and that's it's, the way to do it, it. exactly sure. and at the end of the day you can't really compare because you don't know i mean there's a saying that we say i hear it's like you see the you see the glory but you don't know the story and the story mm -hmm. is is like oh you know they did something bad or they bought their followers or whatever but yet you don't know you know but you see the glory like oh they've got a million plus people and it's like yeah but look at their views if they got like 130,000 people, but on their viewership, it's only like 12 views or 10 views. You're like, mm, something's kind of fishy there. Uh, but you can also look at it like, hey, we started this about six, seven months ago or eight months ago. And, you know, we're we're so blessed and so happy to have what we have. And we can just grow from there because some of these channels have been on back in the 2000s, you know, like, oh, and mm. they're just now getting, you know, their loyal following. Um, but you know, we're, we're brand new. And so we, we understand that, but we, you know. yeah, we just decided to grow ours a different way. Yeah. You know, but just right? showing the work, just yeah. showing the work. And, and, and again, the work. <laughs> again, that might be a stupid thing to do, but it, it fits with our value so, structure. So there you go. You know, yeah. you clearly are extremely enthusiastic about comics and that's such a lovely thing to see. And it's genuinely, in my opinion, better to be nice, you know, bring people up and, you you'll be basically uh, loved by the community back. It just takes a little time. Yeah. yeah, and 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 you also have to understand, like right now with this world pandemic, it's like this is also like a bad time. When people are like, "Hey, I just don't have the money. I would yeah. love to support you more." It's just like, "Hey, I, I'm also got to eat," yeah. you know. And and that's understandable too, which is why, like when you're asking, "Oh, they got secret links." It's like, yeah, we did that for people, you know, to say, "Hey, there's there's a discount, or if you just want to buy the book." We're just grateful that you bought a book, you know, that you were able to take whatever money you got, you know, this month or whatever, and was able to get a book. And that bodes well for people. And people go, yeah, thanks so much. And what, they weren't pressured. They weren't like, oh, I, I, what do I do? It's like, oh, they said I can use this email link at any time during the campaign. That's yeah. like two and a half months. Absolutely. I would love to support them. Not like, do it now. You must use this link tomorrow or yeah, it's going away. One day. Yeah, it's like, Everything must go. We'll bash this baby <laughs> seal with a bat if you don't buy it. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's like you can you can use it when you're ready, you know, and, yeah. and people like that. So, yeah, that's a good line, man. Uh, you, you know, this 
you know the glory, you know the glory, but you don't know the story. I got to, I'm gonna make a note of that. I didn't, I didn't know that ex, uh, that line, that expression. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty you good. You see the glory, but you don't know the story because you see, see the glory, you don't know the story. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So there now, you then go. again, oh. like, yeah, that's a good one. I, like you were mentioning about the numbers of um, of uh, people that subscribe to channels, you know, I mean, again, those uh, either eight hundred and something thousand uh, subscribers, you know, they're, they're the other ninety two percent that don't buy the book. So again, they they're clearly there just for the YouTube entertainment, you know. So, uh, but you yeah. know, I mean, but again, that's if you fine. have uh, eight thousand backers. Fine. That's yeah. great. A thousand backers, you still you can still make a living, like you were uh, well, mentioning. You know. Well, here's the thing. It's like a lot of those people have all those subscribers. They're also making a living off YouTube. You know, so we yeah. ain't making a living off That's YouTube, but they are. You know, so. yeah. Well, your channel is pretty cool. I'm actually have to watch more of it because I, I, I been, I never have time to watch everybody I like. Come but, get uh, some. You should. Come <laughs> over. <laughs> I have to watch more of your videos, and uh, you, you got a really really nice campaign page i mean it's a way structured the campaign and uh you know it's, it's a good it's a good template a good example for anyone out there wanting to do a campaign obviously you, you went to the whole effort of doing three books and all that and that's that alone is uh you know it counts you a lot make sure we're different yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. you don't want to be cookie cutters right yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, don't want I mean you, you, you got like the product you know yeah. yeah you got the product to show you got you got a lot of stuff there you know that that alone already is uh you know half of the battle and then but the way the way you actually <laughs> structure structure the campaign is uh it's pretty cool i mean and, and like jacob was saying you're, you're pretty enthusiastic about it uh i mean the, the and then you you were mentioning what you need to to do to cut out as a as a big youtuber not not to the likes of us likes of a fat a hundred thousand subscribers you know you gotta you gotta be cool uh and you 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 know you gotta be likable <laughs> It's a lot of stuff. Well, I mean, yeah. you know, for example, Jacob is cool, but he's an ogre, so it's not like <laughs> I'm not likable and I'm not cool. So, but that, well, <laughs> Jacob, are you neutral good or are you chaotic good? Which which one are you? Are you just bad? Oh, I'm definitely chaotic neutral. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but what about that one ogre show? Everyone loves him. What what's that one? The ogre the Dis musician? No, Di no Disney. The Disney film. Oh, the Shrek. The Shrek. 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 Yeah, that's that one. Everyone yeah, loves Shrek. Shrek. Yeah, that's true. I'm I'm trying to steal some of Shrek's thunder. There you that's go. my that's my go-to. If you can get ten percent, you'll be fine. Yeah. yeah. All I need to get down is the Scottish accent. Uh, oh yes, 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 yes. That's right. He's got a Scottish accent. One, of one course. kingdom later, then you're good. <laughs> a fake Scottish accent. Uh yeah, I was hearing an alarm there on you guys. I think do you need to go now because you told me you had a, you had another another stream back to back. Is that right? Um, we can do another five more minutes. It's totally yeah. fine. Okay. Yeah, cool. We're we're cool That's hanging okay. out and yeah, they're we're good. Yep. Let oh, me, great. Let just, let's talk about Shrek some more. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's go back to uh, Jacob's work, man. Where are you at with, with this, man? Is it the same page yet? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I'm working slow, buddy. Today, today right. is going to be a long night. Right. Got a long panel there at the top, yeah? Uh, I mean, now, Jacob Are you sharing here. some of this out on Twitter? Are you on Twitter? Are you sharing any of this artwork out at all? Or? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm doing Twitter. I tried Instagram, but Honestly, Instagram algorithm will screw you over if you're an artist with like slow put out time. Oh, it's tough on there. But Twitter works. Twitter, I've been, I've been doing, I think okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it's each platform is always different. You got to find different ways in the yeah. story. You know, you just have to be savvy about it. I mean, I found ways to put our links up. You know, because YouTube is not about the links, except for when you're in your description. So I found or those Instagram, or Instagram. Sorry, yeah. you found those savvy ways to put them up, so people can be like, "Oh, that's great." You know, you just gotta look for it. But yeah, Instagram is also another beast. But yeah, it's 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 different, and it's you know, it's, it's Insta Instagram is, is self-contained. I mean, it yeah. uses its platform to build its yeah. platform and not the individuals. You know, so there's no mm. way for me to really pull people away to different areas you know i mean you can a little bit but it's just really tricky twitter you can pull people any which way you want so. that is true but um i was gonna say the reason why i was asking is because if you're sending those pages out on twitter even if it's a whip you know work in progress um you know a lot of people seem to 
really do those art shares or they like to retweet other people's art. Um, Michael put one up, uh, was it this morning you put one up or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and people are like, oh my gosh, I just want to see the process and it's not even done. So mm -hmm. yeah, your your stuff looks really great. Just keep doing it, keep plugging it away and yeah. put those whips out oh, there. And I got a question kind. for you. Are, are you. Do you use any reference material like for uh, poses or what? backgrounds or anything like that? I have these uh, Figma figures, uh, which are like posable, um, basically uh, one of those wooden dummies, but a little, little bit more detail so I can see some musculature over there. And those yep. do do me quite good for like 90% of the time. But sometimes with the with the twists and you know the, the musculature, it kind of turns like that. I, I, I do take photos of myself, for example, or stuff like that. Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. Dang, man, you're looking really buff there, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 Jacob is, nice is modeling. Yeah, I mean, he, he modeled his hero out of himself. I mean, Jacob, uh, I mean, come on, tell him about your workout, man. You you go to the woods and he lifts trees, huh? <laughs> that, that's that's an over exaggeration and a lie. <laughs> uh, now, come and on, if you I, put that workout on Instagram, you'll definitely get some views. Trust. <laughs> yeah, oh, boy. yeah. <laughs> that's what he's doing his for. Do the swimsuit edition. <laughs> now we'll get you a thousand followers on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, oh. see. I'm definitely uh, the type of person who says you work smarter, not harder. So I'm always I looking. Say that. Well, mm. you did yeah. that, but I'm definitely one of those who is like the quickest. What, what I never do. Possible, you know? Oh, for sure. <laughs> it's should exactly always do what that. I never Always do. find the quick and easy. Oh. Mm. That's right about Instagram. He's very self-contained. He's not uh, intuitive at all, you know. And uh, yeah, Twitter is good. Uh, but I find the uh, thing: the more people you, you follow on Twitter, then. Um, you, you start losing touch with your with your original um, followers, you know, the people at the beginning of your uh, follower list. Uh, I don't know why you, you never again hear from them. It's because you, with Twitter always uses your, uh, it pro probably only puts the, your last tweets in front of your last followers, you know, you made your last 50 followers or something. Because, uh, you know, I, I, I forget I've, I've been following great people and I go back, sometimes I grab my followers list or more. Or the people I'm following, I go on the list and go like, shit, I follow this guy. I forgot about him. I've never again seen a single tweet from this person, but this yeah. person obviously is tweeting every night. And yeah, well, it's, it's, uh, it's, also, yeah, it's complicated, you know. I'm sorry. It's it's also the fact that, um, yeah, if you're, don't, if you're not interacting with the 7,000 people that you follow, you're only going to get the yeah. ones that you put a heart or a like to because, I mean, that's the analytics. I mean, that's the way that the structure yeah, is. It's like they want you to follow and they want people to follow you, but they know – in the real the real twitterverse that you're only going to get like the first 30 people you know or like you said 50 people that's going to like interact with you unless you specifically at someone like if you at you know lewis michael you at jacob or you at you know it's like it's in my yeah. face now you know and so it's like oh okay yeah. but if not yeah yeah well there's an option that twitter could go around that because a lot of times i see um I see retweets, obviously from someone I'm following, right? I see a retweet, but he's retweeting something, and uh, I'm just thinking maybe, obviously, okay, fair enough. He's still a tweet, and he's still something <laughs> that might be worth checking out. But I'm just thinking maybe, maybe Twitter could could do a variation of that process, which in which they only they only put in front of you a, a, a tweet, which is not a retweet of something else, you know, just a single tweet. So like that, you will just open up room for you to get tweets from people that you know you've been following for a long time but you generally lately have not been interacting with i don't know if you understand what i'm what i'm getting at no but totally, um totally. yeah kind of kind of mm -hmm. freeze up space freeze up room for you to get like the tweets from like the the first 500 guys you followed or that followed you whatever you know and it, it they they still tweeting. They're still using the platform, you know. And then maybe we we could get some of their tweets on a daily basis or maybe a weekly basis once in a while, and just avoid the retweets. Obviously, the retweets are still important because you know you're still getting you're still getting interaction with the community. You know, like mm -hmm. some guy did a tweet and somebody else is going to retweet that. You know, but I'm just saying if you, if you really want to get the contact that the individual is doing, especially if you're following a lot of artists and comic book makers and all that. And you know, people people fall off fall off the radar with, with this process yeah. of Twitter use this algorithm sure. like you were explaining, yep, you know. Do. 
They do. I follow through writer. Like, uh, you know, I, I, I was following this guy that was on issue three, and I had already completely forgotten about it. You know, I mean, I had bought first, the second, and, uh, and then the other day I saw somebody retweeted him, and that's how I saw it. Like, oh, shit, this guy, of course. I completely <laughs> forgot that I was buying this series. It's already on issue four. And I completely missed the number, the, the, the complaint for, for the third one, you know, mm -hmm. because you end up going into the back room, into the back carriages of the train, you know, because right. you keep on, you keep on walking forward on the train, you forget the people in the back. So I don't but know. What you what you, you, you failed in the mailing list. What you failed to miss out is that you make sense, right? So that's the difference. <laughs> you yes. make sense. They don't make sense. So that's the big problem. So you actually I mean, make sense. <laughs> and again, like you were saying, the, the system obviously works in an intuitive way. So obviously the, you, you get the people that you're lately interacting with. But it's just uh, they, 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 must, they must hopefully find a loop that allows you just to, 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 to kind of go back to the people that, uh, that you've been following for a longer time without actually expressly going to their page one by one. Because when, I mean, if you're following like 5,000 people and you want to find out what number one is doing, you got to go all the way up down the <laughs> list. It's really long. And then physically you got to go down, you got to scroll down on that, on that list, you know? So yeah, yeah. it's crazy well, stuff. Lewis, we are going to say goodbye. Yeah, yeah, we gotta get going it. for that yeah. other stream. Yeah, we're so excited. This was a great stream. It's yeah, like really chill, you. very yeah. nice. Yeah, we, we talked about you guys. the campaign and not like, oh my god, so much stuff. Uh, and <laughs> ogres, I mean, that's the best, the best. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what we do here. We, we do it, we do it chilled and relaxed here. So, anytime you want to come will, by, yeah, your, your we would pleasure. love to do the same thing, guys. If you guys want to come on the show, um. Yep. I have my come get some live where I do I have some artist stuff, pitch your, your things. Uh, and also Michael Ooh. has his uh, skits uh, fun house. Yep. So mm -hmm. yeah, you're more than welcome to let's schedule you on and let's show some more work and get you guys out there. Yeah, that would be great, man. I mean, I've seen you awesome. in some straight jacket. That was a that's a that's a crazy video, man. You with a straight jacket in the corner in that alley. Oh man, that 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 gives some <laughs> nightmares. <laughs> that's good stuff. And that was with uh verse stone productions they did we did that and it was it was awesome they're a horror production company so again skits you never know what you're gonna get so uh, you guys yeah. gotta do a feature film a full feature film one of these i'll like light see that what i say lewis you're you're, you're, you're talking too much you're, you're oh, talking no, no. oh boy <laughs> I, I, I think i'm gonna disappear tomorrow <laughs> 48 hours passed where is he <laughs> okay well i'm not saying anything else <laughs> i'll see you guys later if you Thank wanna, you so much for having uh, us on our show. Thanks. And guys, make sure that you back skits. Yeah, get uh, over there and get skits, man. Skits the Sun Book One. You got your three books, your three variant covers with your three variant uh, storylines story lines yeah, yeah. all wrapped up yeah. in a signed and numbered belly band. It is awesome. Yeah. Go One get it. insane yeah. adventure. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I'll drop the link for the campaign below the video. And I'll all see right. you guys another time. Thank you for yeah. coming. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, they're gone. So let, let, let me put your uh, page back up. All righty. Yeah, gonna they done a lot there. Yeah, I did very little. <laughs> I apologize. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I wish I could supply your viewers with with some uh, faster art. You can't, you can't talk and draw. You know, that's impossible. <laughs> you hey, that's still I'm trying to get. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well. Uh, I, I think I gotta go and give get a bit more ice, and bloody heat wave. Okay. Gonna get uh, myself some cleaned up. I've been watching uh the BBC version of Dracula, which is actually reasonably okay. Uh, these guys they done a, a package of three series in the end of the year. I think there was Christmas releases. They've done three adaptations of books. You know they've done H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds. They've done Dracula, Bram Stoker's, and they've done another one. I forgot. It was like a, a package deal. Three three books, three series, yeah? Mini series. It's like in two parts, you know? Two, three parts, yeah? The War of the Worlds was really bad. Really bad. <laughs> it's like special effects, photography, everything did not work, yeah? Even the actors were a bit mediocre. The Dracula one, though, although it was panned really badly at the time by the critics and got absolutely no support so much so that it's actually on netflix they purchased at least the rights for 
digital broadcast. <laughs> it's actually so. good. So I'm not the guy to sponsor state television. I'm not the guy to go and say, to say go and watch something done by the BBC. But I got to say, if anyone has a chance to check out Dracula, uh, the BBC Dracula from last year uh, is right now on, on Netflix, both the US one and the European one. It is actually worth a, a watch. It's actually quite good. So oh, at least the down. first episode. At least the first episode was. So anybody that likes Dracula, the original story, anybody is a horror fan, I I don't think they'll be disappointed. I'm always I'm always waiting for a cringe moment in the scripts that this uh, you know most most European productions do. You know because the American oh. productions they they're more they're more scrutinized. You know I mean like like the guys. The guys were just saying now, you know, the power of an editor, you know, a good editor, you know, and uh, one thing is that most most American productions, 80 80 percent of them, maybe even more, they, they beyond the showrunner, they got they got the executive producers, and then and then they got uh, script doctors, and they got you know people in, involved on, in the editing process, and so when you actually have a finished product. Obviously, it tends to aim at a particular market. So, if you're talking about the 18 year old horror, horror, horror show market, and obviously they're not going to be extreme, then it's not going to be Shakespeare. But, but you know, if they're if they're aiming at a general home audience, you know, they want to catch as many people as possible. They tend, you know, they they tend to be good shows. You know, I mean, averagely good shows. While the European shows, some of them are much much more they're superior. In some in some qualities, uh, but at the same time, uh, they they tend not to know their 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 demographics. And that's also what they were saying. You know, it's important to know your demographics and then pitch for them. At in the beginning, that's that's your prime your prime audience. You know, your captive audience, and that's also something I always I always talk about. You know, you know, know know the audience of the book, and start and start pitching the book to them. Same goes with series and movies and all that crap. Yeah, TV shows. Yeah. And, Got to know your 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 primary audience. You got to know it, and uh, and these guys actually, yeah, they've done a, a decent show. It, it's it's aimed it's aimed at a general audience, but it, it's got good enough moments for the for the horror fans, and it's got good enough moments for the 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 fans which are readers. You know, the literary the literary fans that like the classical novels, like Frankenstein, Dracula, obviously. And they've done quite well. So, but, but that's enough of a promoting stream. I'm not fuck mainstream. <laughs> they got this one promo from me for free, and that's it. Because they never, they never promoted anything that I've done. They will never promote anything that we do. So, it's good enough. It's enough of a plug. But uh, yeah, man. So uh, you're gonna do an all nighter, right? That's what you were saying. You're Depends how long I can last, dude. But <laughs> yeah, that's I'll, the I'll do my best. Uh, I mean, uh, the 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 heart is there, yeah, but uh, the eyes and the and the mind oh, yeah. that's, that's difficult <laughs> after a while, yeah. But hey, you're doing well. You're doing well. So uh, oh, you might be able to go through the motions. <laughs> yeah, well, you might be able. To, I'm sure you at least will do the the foreground in this page, and uh, you know maybe oh, yeah. maybe some of the background. So that that's and the you, easy part, you, you know. Well, you can you can do the figures. That's that's easy enough, but. Yeah. When I lose my interest is when it comes to the background, and I'm like, Yo. yeah. <laughs> Especially I mean, when that's, it's um, middle of the night, you know. <laughs> that's uh, that's your plan for tonight is just this page, right? That that's it. Yes, yeah? yes, yes, yes. All right. Okay. Oh man, you know what? I almost forget. I always forget to check out the chat because uh, I I'm yeah. controlling the banners and all that crap. And uh, not that I've used many tonight, but I always forget this. And um, and I was just saying a, an hello to um, Bristolian Dave, uh, if he's still there. So, I mean, he, he popped into the chat just to say hello. Okay. And, you know, just to say hello to him back. I'm not sure if he's still watching. So sorry, Dave. <laughs> but I, 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 you know, I, I have to look at the chat because obviously it's, it's, it's yeah. part of the show. So. Looks like you get most of your views uh, later, and because of the American audience, right? Yeah, I mean it's also this because isn't now, a great time for them. <laughs> no, it's not in the middle of the on a, on a Saturday. So hopefully everybody everybody will uh, watch it later. So uh, and once yeah. again, you know, guys, you know, like like the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you 
press the bell, then uh, every time I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to stream, I'll make the little announcement. And if I see the little uh, that that re retaining retained audience clocks showing me two waiting, three waiting, four waiting, that means you guys have pressed the bell. That means that there's some people waiting, and that gives me enough <laughs> enough. Uh, you know, com I feel compelled, more compelled to come <laughs> as quickly as possible. So, <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. You know, you got it. You got to subscribe to the channel as the only way for us to know that uh, people are interested. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I at least hate this bagging at the end of the videos. <laughs> and I need to mention, if you like what I'm drawing right now, be sure to check out Vestry on Indiegogo. We are eight days left. So oh, we have eight left. 82 oh. backers right now. So please help us get uh, above that 100 mark. And I'll, and that, I'll be very happy, Chappy. And that, <laughs> and that but it's, al it's already, obviously, it's, it's already, uh, the goal is already, it's already, uh, Done, yeah. I mean, the, the, the we're funded. Campaign, yeah? it's funded, yeah. That's right. Okay, let's fine. let's let's still get as much ice on it as possible. Very good. You want uh, right. an even number, and you're offering both the print and the digital on your campaign, isn't it? Sure, that's right. We, we uh, try to uh, do, do our uh, fellow European the best. So, what you're planning you to do, mm -hmm. what sorry, what you're planning to do, uh, in the last day, uh, eight days from now. I'll probably do like a long ass stream. <laughs> you're gonna do it in your own channel, or you, you want to come here? Uh, I'm gonna do you wanna come here to my house. So you got swimming pool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but if you want, I can send you the link, and you might pop up and say hi. All right, we'll so you, you want to do it at your place? I understand. It's fair enough. And then I'll pop in. That's it. <laughs> okay, man. We're gonna oh. go for today. I would like oh, to stay yeah. for longer, but uh, you're not working tomorrow, are you? I'm. You don't have to uh, come. Just in the morning, I need to hit the gym up. So ah, well, okay, that's that's okay. Uh, that's why you're doing a, an all nighter with the pages. I, on the other hand, have to be up uh, in about. Well, I think that little uh, box showed up as I was uh, sh screen sharing the skits book, and he said. I'm waking up in about eight hours. So by now, he's in seven. So I got to go. <laughs> but thank you very much for coming. And thank you for uh, Dave for popping in and everyone Bye. watching now or watching later. So thank you very much and have a good one. Bye bye. That's it. I'll see you later, man. Bye bye.